Everybody, so welcome. Welcome to the Trying to Be Free single release gathering. I'm Von Beeker. Uh, I'm so excited to have uh, so many beautiful people here with me going to, uh, to share words and songs with you tonight. Also to have so many beautiful people uh, with me watching tonight. My friend Heather is here. Says hello Dave. Hey Heather. Good to see ya. Ryan's here. Hey Ryan, good to see ya. Uh, really looking forward to tonight. Um, I, I really can't stress enough how, uh, how lucky we are to have a lot of the people that we have here with us tonight. So first of all, uh, I'm Von Beeker. I said that before, but I was on mute. So I'm, I'm Von Beeker. Welcome. Uh, thank you for being here. Um, whenever I do a Facebook Live like this, I kind of give the same spiel, which is if you've ever been to uh, like a street performers festival, something like that, you'll know that there's this cheesy thing they do where they ask you to applaud uh, as if something amazing is happening so that everyone around you uh, knows, around, around the group sees something and thinks, oh, there must be something amazing happening there. So it really, nothing has changed even though all our tools have changed. Um, the way we can applaud and do that today is if you just put a share out on Facebook, uh, even if you don't say anything and you just want to paste it to your Facebook wall really quick, uh, or click the share button or put it in your story, whatever. It's super helpful because that basically that's how the algorithm works and uh, that's how Facebook knows to tell people that something is going on. So um, if you wanna take a minute to do that, that'd be awesome. Although we've got a great crowd forming already. I see uh, Edward is here with Edward's classic yo. Hey Edward, good to see you. Uh, Peggy's here. Hey Peggy, good to see you. Uh, so many good friends. Kim is here. Uh, Go is here, and Clint is here, and Deborah's here. Awesome. Thank you guys all so much for being here. Um, these are all good friends of mine and good friends of some of the people you're going to meet tonight. So um, this single, Trying to Be Free, just went out yesterday. And uh, I just want to say, first of all, I'm glad I'm doing this the day after because I really have a lot to celebrate today as far as this song goes. Uh, Ellen is here and says, great new song. I'm glad you like it, Ellen. Thanks for being here. Um, hey, and Susan's here too. Good to see you, Susan. Thanks for being here. Uh, what a wonderful night this is going to be. So um, so I just want to share with you quickly first that uh, this song has done better for me already uh, than any song I've ever put out, which is pretty exciting. So this really is a, a, a party for me celebra celebrating that. Uh, when I went to bed last night, on the first day that I had the song out, I had over 100 streams already on Spotify, which I've never, guys, I've never even gotten close to that. I think the last single I put out is still at under 40 streams, and I put that out like two months ago or a month ago or something. So this is this is huge for me. So then, and the uh, momentum's just kept going. It was at like 145 streams when I checked, uh, I think around 11 or noon today, uh, noon, and that was the last time I checked, so I'm sure it's, wouldn't be surprised to be up over 200 by the end of the weekend, which is amazing. So thank you for everybody that's been streaming, trying to be free. Um, everybody that's been listening to it in any format, anywhere you can find it. Basically, wherever you listen to music, you should be able to find it. If it's not there, tell me, because it should be. I paid for it to be there. Uh, and you, if, if all else fails, you can get it from my website at vonbeaker.com. And uh, some, sometimes people ask, what's the best way to get the song so that you get the most money? Uh, I'm, I know it sounds like self-serving for me to say, sometimes people ask this, but really they do. Um, the best way to do that is just buy it right off my website because there's no commission that goes to iTunes, there's no commission that goes to Bandcamp, and when you do that, you get uh, two versions, the MP3, the WAV version, and the, the artwork as well in high res. So that's, that's the best way um, to buy it. And you can also leave a tip there if you're so inclined. Uh, hey, Mike's here. Hey, Mike, good to see you. And Ryan says, hey, Mike. So this is like this is like community, meta community happening here. I love it. Um, cool. Ryan is a great singer songwriter from Red Deer that you should check out if you haven't heard, haven't heard Ryan Cardiff. Every, every time uh, Ryan Cardiff comes out with a song, I always go listen to it right away because I uh, I always love it. Um, okay, so trying to be free. This is a this is a crazy song for a couple reasons. Um, first of all, this song maybe gets the deepest into where I'm at in my faith journey, my, my complicated relationship with religion out of any song that I've put out uh, yet. 
So you may not know this about me, but uh, my school training is to be a youth pastor. I went to Bible college for four years, so I spent a lot of time with that book and those people. And um, I'm not sure exactly where I've landed. It's uh, it's it's complicated right now, um, but uh, but I'm in a good place with good people, and I'm happy to be where where I'm at. And I think the song says that better than I could than I could ramble on now. So I'm not going to do that. But one of, the, uh, one of the things I've been really blessed to be a part of in the last several years is to work on my songwriting uh, with a group of amazing artists in Santa Fe, New Mexico at an event called the Glen Workshop. So uh, if you've never been to Santa Fe, first of all, go when we can travel again, get there, put that on the top of your list. It's beautiful. New Mexico's amazing. Um, but even more amazing are all the people I got to meet when I went to that event uh, every year. And so a lot of those people are the people that you will meet tonight. Um, so uh, this, this song comes out of that place uh, because a lot of us are creative people uh, who've come from a church religious background or, or maybe are still in that place and have always felt a little bit at odds or a little bit chafing against the, the, uh, the rules and restrictions and kind of the, the um, confinements of, of that world. Uh, but also not wanting to give up on the value and the, the roots uh, and the community and the encouragement and the hope that we found there and not knowing what to do with that. So that's, that's what the song is about, but that's really the story that uh, so many people that I've met at, these, at this event um, embody. So I'm going to introduce you to uh, a whole bunch of them tonight. You're going to meet uh, Tanya Runyon, who's a fantastic poet uh, and fiddle player, I should say. Uh, you're going to meet All Right, All Right, which is uh, Seth Kent, China Kent's really good friends of mine in Denver, Colorado. Uh, Tanya's coming to us from Illinois. Uh, you're going to meet, uh, oh, and All Right, All Right are fantastic folk musicians in their own right, so you should definitely look up their stuff as well. Um, they have some beautiful songs. They also have a version of Trying to Be Free on their latest album, which is uh, totally different than my version. So if you want to hear the song done in a different way, you can uh, listen to that. It's, it's awesome as well. They have some great... Uh, harmonies at the end that it didn't make it into my version that I really love. Uh, Todd Truffin is here with us. Todd is a, a poet, uh, one of the one of the uh, lowest voices I've ever heard. You'll hear him just s sliding in under the the chorus at the very end of the recording of the song. Um, and uh, yeah, just a great guy all around. So I'm glad to have Todd here with us. Um, my friend Tim that. Uh, has a similar background to me. We went. We were in youth group together. We used to try and make teenagers behave together uh, semi-professionally. And uh, he's an incredible creative. Uh, he wrote a piece called My Little Plastic Jesus, which is a one-man uh, play. Um, and uh, he's going to do a, a kind of an excerpt from that for us tonight, which I'm really excited about. Uh, Karen, who I got, who I met at the last Glen, I believe, is uh, is also a great poet, and she's going to be reading for us tonight. Um, Emmett is Emmett Michael is an amazing musician from right here in Edmonton, Alberta, um, and uh, and he has a great journey. Uh, he's been sharing a lot about his journey uh, being trans in the church and um, trying to deal with that and uh, knowing that God loves him, but God's people don't always seem to love him and uh, working through that. So so um, he's been having some technical difficulties earlier tonight, but he's gone over to a friend's house to try and get working Wi-Fi. So I think we're going to have, by the time he's on, I think it's going to be okay. So hopefully we get to hear uh, Emmett tonight. Jen Stewart Fuston is uh, one of my favorite poets, period. Um, I just love everything that I read or hear that she's, she's uh, written. And she's going to be by, with us by video because she's on a little holiday with her family this weekend. But she sent us a little video, and the poems are fantastic. So I can't wait to share that with you as well. Uh, almost there. Josh Barkey is a, f a screenwriter, a painter, a uh, hilarious guy, a, a wild card, and, uh, and a singer-songwriter that I didn't even know until like this year. So he's been putting out a song every week on YouTube. Uh, which has been really fantastic to watch. And we're going to be collaborating on a song uh, soon here. So watch for that. He's going to be playing us some stuff on his baritone uke. Uh, and then I'm going to end the night by playing you the world premiere of the Trying to Be Free music video that I spent 
all my spare hours this week editing and putting together so I could try and have it ready for today. Uh, and Lindsay Walker, an artist here from Edmonton, uh, filmed it this week with me. So we really got that done quickly, didn't we, Lindsay? It was, it turned out good. Um, I can't wait to show it to you. So I see the chats blowing up. We've got so many wonderful, beautiful people in here. Uh, this is great. This is so encouraging. <clears throat> oh, so Ariel is here and knows, knows Josh Barkey. Awesome. Well, thanks for joining us all the way from Kentucky. That's awesome. Good to have you. Mark's here. Mark's an old friend from the Glen Workshop, from the singer, so, singer song, the songwriting workshop that we took with the great uh, band Over the Rhine. Mark's good to see you. Uh, Ruth is here. Great, great friend from Edmonton here, and she is a priest in the Anglican Church as well. And uh, so glad you can be here, Ruth. And uh, who else have we got in this mix? I have to make a confession when I'm wearing my contact lenses, like I'm doing now. Uh, I like wearing them because I don't get weird reflections and my glasses make my face look about half the size that it actually is because they're so strong. <laughs> but uh, but I can't read the computer very well, so I might, you know. But I, I know this is Laurel Dugan. Laurel's here and she gives a big shout out and hi to everybody because we know uh, Laurel as well from um, times past, times gone past. And Kristen is here, I believe, as well. Uh, Kristen's going to be reading. I forgot to introduce Kristen. Kristen, I'm so sorry. It's been, I'll have to debrief you all for the wild week that I've had this week, but it's been um, another time. But let's just say it's been a wild, wild week. And, uh, and I forgot to introduce Kristen. But Kristen is going to be reading for us, I believe, tonight as well. Uh, so I'm looking forward to that because Kristen is another wonderful friend from the Glen, Kristen Tennant. So looking so forward to that. Um, okay. That, with, without further ado, I think it's come time where I have to introduce you to kind of like the, the, uh, the genesis, the fuel to the fire that is the Trying to Be Free song, the, uh, the muse, if you will, that got this whole thing started. My good friend Tanya Runyon, a uh, poet, uh, fiddler, and uh, drunkard as well, as she's about to share. So there's a whole story here that I have to tell about. So the opening lines to the song Trying to Be Free are uh, kneel down while I hold back your hair. There's no need for shame, honey. We've all been there. So I, I, think, um, I think this would be a story better told uh, probably by, by Tanya. So I'm going to bring Tanya in to at least um, tell it with me or part of it. Uh, hope that's OK. Tanya, you good for that? You give me a thumbs up if you're OK with that. And dump the sign. <laughs> it's a thumbs medium. I'm getting this. I don't know what this means. All right, I'm throwing her in. I'm throwing her in. Hi. Tanya, <laughs> good to see you. Hello. Again. You ready for this? Oh, I'm ready saying? for this. Um, it's just the whole story thing is a little complicated because all my kids are home. Oh, yeah, right. Where do we begin? So, I don't know. Do you want know me to I'm tell the story so and you just confirm? Yes. Nod? <laughs> yes. Absolutely. <laughs> okay, and if there's parts a part of the story that I need to stop telling, you just do this, okay? Oh no, yeah, no, I've got. No one can hear you. This is good. <laughs> okay, awesome. All right, so here's here's the story. So Tanya and I both grew up in religious backgrounds that are, I would say, well, evangelical and to some extent fundamentalist. Some people would certainly say fundamentalist, and one of the things that they're fundamental about is uh, drinking alcohol, I think. Is that your background too, Tanya? I mean, yeah, more or less. I, I wasn't raised in it, but as a teenager, young adult, yes. Yeah, yeah. And, and I was definitely, same thing. I, 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 people around me drank growing up, but in the churches that I got into as a teenager, young adult, it was definitely uh, a non-starter. You did not drink. It was a rule. You don't drink. When I went to Bible college, you didn't drink. You could get kicked out if you drank. That's how serious it was. So, so I didn't have a drink of alcohol really until I was about in my 30s uh, when my wife became a police officer, <laughs> which makes sense, I think. Um, of course. So, so this whole world was like is still like relatively new to me as uh, you know. In addition to knowing where my limits are. Um, 
all those kind of things and what my relationship to alcohol is and um, what it's for and what it isn't for and all that stuff. So, um, so Tanya and I, we've been at the Glen. We met at the Glen, um, became good friends, and we were we were hanging out. We, uh, I'll just long story short, we had all a group of us had found this place to hang out in the evenings at this event that we that we lovingly termed the Shack, and we would hang out here at night. Kind of after the official conference things were over, we would go and hang out at the Shack. Um, and so one night we knew we were going to have a great night at the shack. We were, I think we were, it was our day off or something. And we stopped at this liquor store on the way back to get something really special to, uh, to have at the shack. And uh, Tanya's eye just, just caught on this bottle of, um, I actually have it here, Tanya. I have it here. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So this, so Tanya saw this yeah. bottle shining on uh, on the shelf of this the Saints and Sinners liquor store. The, li the liquor store was literally called Saints and Sinners. Oh. So what she saw was uh, Bird Dog Peach Whiskey. Oh gosh, I'm this is a thing that shouldn't exist. <laughs> if you're a whiskey drinker, you should know this shouldn't exist. But for Tanya, this was like the bee's knees. So. So she, so she was like, should I buy it? It's kind of expensive. I was like, yeah, you should buy it. You should buy it. So I do take some, uh, I, I do wear some shame in this story. And uh, credit. And credit, and credit. Mm -hmm. So we took, the, we took the whiskey back. I think we got some little plastic cups at the Dollar General or something like that. <laughs> at the Dollar Tree, maybe it was. Mm -hmm. And uh, <laughs> Edward knows a little bit of this story already. He says, no wonder someone got sick. <laughs> yeah, you know where this is going. So, so what happened is we had these little plastic cups, and it was the shack was about a hundred yards away from the campus where we were staying. Down, it was in the high desert, so it's kind of kind of desert, little cactuses and sagebrush all around, and it was very dark out there. It's kind of this lean-to. It was very dark, so we're out there. There's not a lot of light. We're kind of lit up by our phones and. Our phones and our hearts, and that's it to go but for light. So we're passing passing this bottle of peach whiskey around, and we're all going to try it once. Uh, you know, there was a half dozen of us there or something, and we each try it, and nobody likes it, except for except for <laughs> Tanya. Tanya definitely likes it, and so um, it keeps going around the circle. We keep kind of saying, oh, "I'm okay. I'm good for now." passing it around some more. It comes back to Tanya. Tanya's like, no, I'll, I'll take some more. So about a half hour, 45 minutes into this, uh, into these festivities, uh, I was actually sitting on a very unstable bench with Tanya at this time that was made out of like half a log or something. And I just <laughs> felt the bench kind of start to sway. <laughs> and I looked over at Tanya and she was just losing her ability to stay upright. And I knew instantly that um, Tony you were in trouble it was becoming clear to me and everyone yeah. around kind of looked at each other and we were like Tanya is <laughs> in this is not gonna go well and we said Tanya like how much of that did you have to drink and this is where the context comes into play where Tanya doesn't have a lot of experience with hard liquor and uh, and it was very dark and mm -hmm. um, so we looked at the bottle, and it was a it was a bottle, you know, r very similar to this. I want you to know, <laughs> Tanya, that I I I have a better bourbon than this, but I got out my worst bourbon to drink for you tonight because that thank you. Really good. So <laughs> this isn't terrible, but it's worse than anyone else. Yes. Yeah, in your honor. So so Tanya had drunk in about this much, I think, of this of this bottle. It was about a third gone. Um, but it was, it was so, so dark, dark, I had no idea. Maybe more. And it was so dark, she didn't know. <laughs> and it was just, you know, she assumed we had all been drinking as much as her, but we weren't drinking it at all. We were just passing <laughs> it back to her. And it was like peaches. It was just and like, it tasted you know, like peaches, all that sugar. It was, it was so much yeah. sugar just to mask it, right? <laughs> oh, man. So, <laughs> so anyway, she, she basically fell off a cliff at this point. Um, she had literally. to be literally she had to be laid down on this other bench so we kind of <laughs> laid her down and she just kind of went into the fetal position started rocking back and forth she was kind of like moaning kind of like crying a little bit wailing a little bit 
<laughs> but also, um, Tanya was actually at this event as as an as a <laughs> as a mentor to young um, would be young poets uh, from from religious backgrounds uh, largely. And so the, all of this started to set into Tanya, and she she started wailing over and over again. I am a professional. I'm a professional. And she would say, "Guys, this is so dumb. This is so dumb." And that was kind of phase one. Um, and then, and and after that, it started to get worse. It turned into, "Guys, you still love me, right?" You guys love me, right? Um, so this went so on for like, bad. I think awful. at some point someone had to take you to go pee in the cactuses and you kind of fell down and into some, in, down a hill into some cactuses or something. Yeah, I did. I, I rolled, rolled, rolled backwards, backwards down a hill of uh, scrubbing cacti. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So have I gotten most of the story right so far, Tanya? Did I leave anything out? Did so I... far. Okay. So all of us kind of young um artists uh, from religious backgrounds have no idea how to deal with somebody this drunk. I had no idea and we were getting afraid and we didn't know what to do <laughs> and it was getting very late, it was very dark out and we knew that we would have to parade her basically <laughs> stumbling back through the entire campus back to her room which was in the absolute farthest place yeah. it could have been yeah. from yeah. where the shack was. So it was way up this hill in the dark, past all the other rooms, and Tanya was not in a place where she was good at being quiet, either. So we didn't want to we didn't no. want to carry her wailing. I'm a professional <laughs> into the night. Um, we didn't know what to do, so we're kind of like uh, people went to bed kind of one by one, and it was just a few of us left, and we're like, what do we do? And then out of nowhere, like an angel of oh, mercy, an angel, yes, China Kent uh, comes wandering down the path. I don't know why, <laughs> I don't know how. She just knew, it was like, Tanya had set off a bat single, signal when she rolled into the scrub somehow. And China's bringing with her a like brand new, really young first time attendee oh of this conference, who this is her initiation into what this <laughs> gang of misfits is all about. Into this, this Christian event. Right, this Christian event, yeah. arts event, right. Mm -hmm. That's what it's all about. So. So, uh, so China, um, China just shows up and like drunken triage is the best I can describe mm -hmm. it. It was just like, she knew, she's like, we need to do this. We need to do this. We need it to do this. It was amazing. She was, took over. It was amazing. It was like watching, it was like watching a brain surgeon or watching like, like Prince. If you've ever seen that video where he plays guitar and then he throws it into the sky and it just never comes down. It was like watching that. It was, <laughs> it was amazing. Uh, I'm still in awe. And so China just took over. She took command and uh, she got her to throw up a lot. And I think that's what saved you, Tony, is, is China got you to barf a lot. I that's just see China, yes. China, I'm going to bring you in for a second here. Are you cool with that? China's, China's just dying over here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the China we know You're and a love. professional China. Yeah, China is the true professional. <laughs> oh, China's on mute. Hang on. There we go. Oh, gotcha. We <laughs> so is this how you remember it, China? For the most part? Well, I just remember, yeah, well, I just remember uh, y'all were just so sort of like um, cowed and like befuddled and poor Tanya was just like, do you hate me? <laughs> and I was like, oh no. And someone said, oh, I don't I don't know how long we have to be here. Is it like, is she gonna be okay in like 15 minutes? I was like, no, <laughs> no, she's not. <laughs> anyway, it was um, the honor of a lifetime, Tanya. I'm really glad yes. I could have, I just, you know, I didn't know what was going on. I just thought we were gonna do some shacking and, and we did. We sure we, did. Oh, we did, we did. <laughs> okay, thanks, thanks, China. Thanks again for being a hero. We'll see you, we'll see you soon. Anytime, anytime. Um, okay, so then after that, China did get, we did get Tanya up the hill. We did get her to, to bed, everything worked out. China tucked, tucked you in, I think, and mm -hmm. gave you some magic 
magic beans, magic pills of some sort, yeah. and water, and and I made it. I made it. Yeah, it was, you made it. And I even worked the next day. Like I did. I was back to myself. It was a miracle. Yeah. So, so I have to say, and I think I've told you this, Tanya, that I I went to bed like super worried about you. And, oh. and, I, and I was, you know, I was worried about you physically, but I was worried about you emotionally, like emotionally and spiritually as well, because I knew this was probably like you and I both deal with similar issues of like shame and guilt and baggage and all that. And I just, yeah. I remember waking up the next day feeling really heavy for you mm. and praying for you and being like, man, I hope, um, hope she's okay. <laughs> hope she's okay. And, uh, and that's where this song came from. I just sat down and I wrote this song out of that space. So, uh, so that's the story behind, behind the song. It's not a funny song, but it's a funny story. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> so that's how life is. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Sad songs, sad songs from funny stories. That should be yep. my new model. <laughs> but yeah, it was a miracle. I remember get, going to breakfast, it was pretty early. And I walk in and who do I see but Tanya sitting there with like coffee in hand oatmeal and a lucky bowl charms or something. probably lucky charms just ready to go i was like it was it was it was literally like one of the few miracles i think i've seen in my life <laughs> i still don't know how it happened <laughs> um okay well we're a little we're a little behind from that story but i know it was totally worth it so we're gonna totally i'm gonna hand it. over to tanya now and tanya's gonna be our first reader of the night now that you you know her more intimately than she might like <laughs> and uh and then right after that we're gonna we're gonna uh, hand it over uh pretty quickly to uh to uh china and seth from all right all right we're gonna play some music for us so if you're just joining uh thanks so much for being here with us uh we've got a great group of people uh we can always use more if you want to do a quick share to facebook that's always great too but i'm going to pass it over to tanya and get out of here okay Okay. okay. So, um, that story that Dave told was actually not my first experience with, um, alcohol at the Glen. <laughs> I've had others. <laughs> and after hearing the poem I'm going to read, you all might think I have some serious issues, but, um, it's just, you know, something about Santa Fe and Dave on Baker. I don't know. So, um, 2013 was my first time at the Glen, and that was actually uh, my first time meeting Dave and China and Todd and Josh and many other uh, people who are just so special uh, in my life. Um, so I just uh, finished a project of writing myself, to, writing to myself sonnets uh, for every one of my prime number ages. So they're little epistolary sonnets to uh, the 15 prime number ages I've been so far. And believe it or not, alcohol plays a role in my sonnet to 41 because Dave and I share the same birthday at our birth, August 4th, and our birthdays always when we're at the Glen land during the Glen. So my very first year there, I turned, it was the dance at the end of the week, and that's uh, when I was turning at midnight, 41. <laughs> Dave, um, many, many years younger. But um, I had actually never gotten drunk or even tipsy, I think, in my entire life until that night. And I, uh, I was just having a wonderful time and the elevation uh, apparently was getting to me more than I'd realized. Um, in the poem, I say I had four glasses of wine because it worked well with the meter, but I really think I just had like two. And the elevation was just uh, killing me. So um, this is a sonnet to myself at 41. To the one I love who twirled through Santa Fe with two, then three, then four glasses of wine. Too dizzy with elevation and birthday to say much more than 41, 41, can you believe I'll turn 41 at 12? Pretending no one had ever lived that age 
and you, that noodly dancer, a thousand selves snarling and nuzzling in the same floppy cage, were made to hide and hold in all the light, like petals smoldering in dark O'Keefe's. I'm 41, you sang, your temples bright with stars that overflowed the mountain reef. You lurched and leapt into midnight's embrace, into a decade you'd guard and demolish with grace. And I'm done. <laughs> I had to mute myself. I was going to say, so I feel was, like I need oh, to come back in and give you some snaps or something at least. <laughs> awesome. What a great pick. Thanks, Tanya. Thank you. I, uh, one of the things that I think you just demonstrated that I love so much about all of, all of you people that I met at the Glen and so many of you that are watching tonight is that you have the ability to turn ugly things into beautiful things through art making, whether that's poetry, music, um, visual art, whatever. I think that's just a miracle. It's wonderful. Um, so yeah, thank you for doing that. Thank you. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to boot you out for now, Tanya. Yep. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to go over to Facebook now. Yeah. All thanks right. for being with us. We'll see you in a bit. Thank you. All right, so all right, all right, so all right, all right. I didn't do that on purpose, I swear. All right, all right, uh, have become great friends of mine, and they're fantastic musicians. Um, their their new album. I, I wanted to say, uh, I I was I just spoke called your new album. I was trying to remember the name, and I and then the word that came to my head was concubine. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, maybe we'll write that mm. one someday. No, yeah. but, but this one is blanking. Blanking. I'm blanking. That's what's crucible? The crucible. Same, you know. Yeah, C, it's a three-syllable C word. That crucible. You know, concubine. I feel like there's an interesting <laughs> story though to concubine. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So check out Crucible uh, if you haven't heard it on Spotify. All the places. It's wonderful. Um, but I'm gonna get. I'm gonna get out of here and just pass it off to you guys because you know what you're doing. Okay. Okay. Cool. Thank you, Dave. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for having me. How do I do that? How do I leave? I want to leave. <laughs> How do I leave? Just ah. go away. Hey, everyone. You guys, this is not the same as being in the same room with you, uh, but seeing all of the comments and all of my little side conversations, I really only have one, but <clears throat> don't, don't think, think I'm cheating on that. you. Now everyone's going to be jealous. <laughs> um, oh, my gosh. I think I might cry tonight just being with all these lovely souls and um, this um, just beauty, just beauty in the form of words. Um, I am gonna take these off though, because they're not serving me. So there, there we go. We're gonna play a few songs off of the album Crucible, not off of the album Concubine. That's the next album. That will next happen project. later. <laughs> That's our co-write with Dave. <laughs> yeah, Dave, there you go. We gotta co-write that Peggy. album. Hi, Deb. Yay. Kim's on. Josh Barkey. Okay. Um, Deborah, you should have heard her laughing during the telling of the Tanya story. Deb, I was, I was tired. This is called Over the Edge. We live in Denver and uh, we're actually on the same time zone as Dave. Like we're kind of the only, he's the only other person that I know who lives in the same time zone. <clears throat> so we live right near the Rocky Mountain Range and this song is about getting the hell out of Dodge and leaving a bad situation behind. Ow, I almost squished my arm. One, two, one, two, three, four. Honey Joel's work at chicken at the grocery store. Yesterday he took his page Walked out the door. He said, Honey, I don't know where I'm going. Oh, and I don't know where I've been. Honey, it don't matter no more, cause I'm tired of getting into the vein. And Mama left this morning and she's not coming back. 
I'm sick of feeling sorry for my sin. So pack up your knock of American girl. Get your stuff out of the shed. Running down the highway at 65. Laying all my chips on the line tonight. Feeling unlucky after 13 years of letting her win every fight. Baby, starting over and worthy. When 37 and change, I'm gonna let these wheels take me over the edge of that rocky mountain range. She worked the second shift on the sugar mill floor. Yesterday she took her heart and oh, we walked out the door. She said, I guess every innings don't just have I've been waiting for it all of my life. They don't pass me over for promotion again. So I guess my chicken drive. Running down the highway at 65. Laying all my chips on the line tonight Feeling unlucky after 33 years of letting them win every fight Baby, starting over in what? When 57 and train I'm gonna let these wheels take me over the edge of that Rocky Mountain range Only 70. You and every crack in the black top three way crying like a baby. Baby, starting over ain't happening. The Lord, I need a change. I'm gonna let these wheels take me over the edge of the Rocky Mountain Range. I'm like picturing all your faces as I'm singing and I just want you to know that it is giving me so much life and energy. Seth and I have not played a live show in person <clears throat> since our release show, which is October 24th. And, um, and that was outside. That was outside and it was like 22 degrees and it was so cold. And because we live in Colorado, as I said, but um, I wanted to say that um, we are planning a backyard socially distant tour this summer, and we are hoping to play Tanya Runyon's backyard or um, her deck in uh, Illinois outside of Chicago. And um, if uh, <clears throat> y'all want to be there, uh, please just let me know. Or host. Or if you would like to host one in your backyard, um, if you don't live so close to Tanya. But, um, I also wanted to say that Tanya uh, was my mentor at the last Glen that I attended. That's really why China saved her. Cause <laughs> I, like, I to gotta save, save my mentor. mentor. Uh, and uh, she listened to all the songs that I had prepared for the album we released. Um, we had not gone into the studio yet. We were going to go into, so the Glen uh, 2019 happened in August and we started recording in September. And Tanya was such a wonderful um, encourager, cheerleader. She just sat there and listened to me and helped me think through it. And um, and it was a, a real, well, it was an honor to work with you, Tanya, but also it was it was really helpful. Um, so we're gonna play a song now. What are we playing? Uh, champagne. Oh yeah, we're gonna play Tanya's favorite song. It's called Champagne. Uh, Dave gave us a theme for the night and um, I feel like this song goes with the theme. I'm not remembering the theme at the moment. But <laughs> Dave will remind us. Dave will remind us. Uh, this song, um, this song is is uh, 
very much about uh, feminine resilience and just resilience in general. I didn't tell you, I did, uh, you don't have to remember this. Give you everything you I don't need. Maybe you can feed it to the apples. I'll give you all the babies that were taken from me. Two of them are buried underneath that tree. Yeah, two of them are buried underneath that tree. Give me light or give me dark. In the shadow of your wings and your water mark. Give me drought or give me rain. I'll find a way to still remain. I'll follow you and drink champagne. We moved to the south when I was 12. That's when I learned to say farewell. Sometimes the girl grows up too fast. In that land of social caste. Oh, it gets hard to stay steadfast. Shattered me around the wall. Chaos seemed perpetual. Through my adolescent walls, you take the bull in the matador. Yeah, you save the bull in the matador. They always try to tame my body. Try to cut me down like a telephone wire. Hold me be the bad before I roll. Well, they didn't count on my tippy toe. Yeah, they didn't count on my tippy toe. So give me peace, so give me strife. Softest touch of life. Through the lesson, through the pain. You show me the way to remain. Oh, I'll follow you and I'll remain. You got all your children in your nest. And you never, 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 never rest. And you never, 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 never rest. So give me light or give me dark. In the shadow of your wings and your water bar. Give me dark or give me rain. Oh, I'll find a way to drink champagne. Yeah, I'ma find a way to drink champagne. I'll find a way to drink champagne. We gonna find a way to drink champagne. Woo! Okay. Dave asked me, ask us to play this next song for you. It's called Mercy. Um, I wrote it after the Parkland shooting. Uh, if you don't know this about us yet, you will now. We don't, we don't shy away from uh, hard things, but also uh, it's, it's a lot of happy sad around here. Um, so this is called Mercy. Let me just make sure I'm too. Seth has to make sure he's in open D. And, um, I just want you guys to know how much I love you. I want to say that Peggy Diorio and uh, uh, um, Steve were at our freezing cold record release uh, concert in Colorado. That was wonderful. And, um, and we're going to play a backyard show in her backyard as well. Okay. 
Six o'clock, wake up, my bones are laid in this wasteland of cotton skin. I wait in the dark for the east for dawn. Then I get up, drink coffee again. I wrote you a letter, then scribbled it out. The words melted like chalk in the rain. Nothing I say or do can bring you back to these arms once again. Four days ago, we were laughing and punching the air with our fists just for fun. When the news broke, I ran shoes on tight. Somehow I knew you were gone. Windmill of hearty grinding numb. Can't I just go back to bed? Grass like an anchor mill, stone of glory, a mine shaft of stories. Pass by your bedroom, came back to open the door, smell your sweetness again. Your shoes in the hallway stand sentinel, I'll leave them there just the same. Memory, the trickster, time, the illusion, the referee, cancel the game. Walking times, corridors, like the blind, thinking there's something to gain. Steer past the votives of maple and oak, and the aspen balls flickering flame. Caught in the in between, living in hell, meet and mingle on this earthly plane. You like an angel of mercy, my dreams are cold with the rush of the wind. I know blame snap mine, but I fought myself, my country and my Of counting the stars. Twelve, twenty-seven, yesterday eight. Thirty-six, all those are Mercy, mercy, mercy me. All things on his days will be. Oh, have a mercy. Oh, have a mercy. Gonna end with um is that okay? Thank you. We were gonna end with um don't worry, Dave, but yeah, no, it sounds good. It's Take time it to away. sing. End with don't Say worry. That end with don't worry. Yes, please. Okay. It'd be great. I preemptively came on in your in your little pause and have mercy. I came on because I thought you were done and then then I had to <laughs> it. it was very I embarrassing. Was... <laughs> 
I wish You're I had come on and I was just just dripping in tears. That would have been, you know. That Hopefully you came, fun. like, yeah, with, like, mascara running. Yeah, that's right. All right, that I'm, out, really I'm out of here. Take it away. Okay. This is, uh, this is a song that we've been ending all of our live streams with. It's called uh, Don't Worry. All these songs are on our new album called Crucible, which you can find in all the places. As well as our version of, of to Trying to Be Free. free. is certainly why I'm here. Thank you. And Thanks, I'm not Dave. here because I can't remember which button to push. Hold on. Okay. Got my, got my headphones on now. Oh, so good, you guys. So good. Thank you. <sighs> Love Thanks you guys. for having us, Dave. Oh. I, uh, I, really, I really wouldn't have wanted to do this with, without you, uh, <laughs> without you guys here. I want to see both of you. There we go. Wouldn't have been, wouldn't I can't wait for the, um, the tour, the, Dave, the, the Von Beaker All Right All Right tour. That's right. That's right. Yeah. It's all, it's yeah. the tour will be called All Right, Von Beaker. All right. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Von Beaker. All right. <laughs> all right. There's that. We have a lot of, we had a lot of comments on here about your laugh, China. People, people <laughs> miss your laugh. And I think we all know why now. I love you guys so much. Uh, we got to laugh. Otherwise, we just cry laugh. all the time, right? It's right. Pretty exactly. much. Exactly. That's right. more or less correct. Uh, Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna say farewell for now. Love you guys. Farewell Good for night. now. Beautiful. Good night. Over at Facebook. We're gonna go put you on our big screen and watch you inside. Perfect. I'll do Yay. it justice. I hope. Okay. All right. So I'm gonna keep on rolling because we're we're uh, you know, someone just commented uh in one of the feeds I'm in. What's better than going overtime with art? Which I think is true. But I'll try and respect your time. Uh, as well as possible here, and I know the time of the people that want to be involved, so I'm going to hand it over to Todd right away here, because Todd's been waiting so patiently. Uh, I will say, the only thing I'll say about Todd is he, uh, I guess keeping on theme for the night, he brews, he home brews beer, and he's the first person, he was the first person I ever met that I drank beer, that I knew the person who brewed it, uh, and he will al always go down in history as introducing me to some fantastic craft beer, and also, the first time I ever saw Todd Truffin read something, he was reading the uh, poorly translated instructions to install a toilet, I believe. And the way he read it in a deadpan was uh, 
so, so funny, which is not what he's going to read tonight, but just know that as, as beautiful and eloquent as Todd is, he's also uh, hilarious. So without further ado, hey, Todd. Hey there. <laughs> Good to see you. Again. Good to see you too. <laughs> I'm going to, uh, for time's sake, I'm just going to get out of your way. Is that okay? That's great. All right. Get out of the way. Hey. <laughs> uh, here we go. All right, folks. Hey, um, how about all right, all right? Um, if you go to allrightx2.com, you can get some of their wonderful, amazing merch and uh, and support Seth and China. Um, and that would be a good thing to do. So I've got some poems here um, that I'd like to share. Um, Dave mentioned that the Glen Workshop takes place in Santa Fe in the high desert. And this first uh, poem is called High Desert Thunderstorm. Because those of us that have gone to the Glen know that the one of the glories of the natural world at that time of year are these monsoon-like thunderstorms that roll in and then just as quickly go away. Down the mountain grumbles steel. Cumulonimbus toddler tantrum needs a nap. In the wake of sage, white caps wash my weary face. At home, the only time wisdom overwhelms the senses is when the rosemary, garlic, and sage rolled under the skin of the spatchcocked bird precipitates into the bed of parsnips, turnips, and carrots. The tincture infused in roots rises to sprout another gratuitous harvest. Here, living sage sachets down pinion avenues, running ahead, around, among mazing streets. I lose her, stand gasping at a blind corner, soaked. This next poem is called Epiphany. Um, I have an aquarium. Most aquarium, the, the first one of the first fish that you buy is a neon tetra. These tiny little fish that um, are red and blue and silver. Um, and you usually buy a lot of them and they swim around in a school. Epiphany. Last neon. Tetra alive, swims like there is still a school around her, until in the corner, her eye she notices there is nothing in the corner of her stunned eye. Um, this next poem is called The Prairie, and it is modeled after Psalm 63. I thirst. As the driver of an overheating car on a summer road trip through Oklahoma on I-40 craves a cool jug of water, I thirst for you. Later. When the tow truck has come and taken me down the road to an icy hotel and I have feasted on chain restaurant fare reheated and served at premium prices and washed the dust from my throat with watery iced tea, my soul will be satisfied. Laying on bleached hotel sheets the loud humming air conditioner keeping watch, I will meditate on you late into the night. For when the sun seared my skin, you 
with brooding wing, threw me a shadow and a breeze, and I sank to my knees. But you, you lifted me up. This next poem is, I guess, what you would call an erasure poem, um, taken uh, from a passage in um, the Book of Common Prayer. It is called Fraction. Be known. In the breaking, we break. Alleluia. Be known. The bread we are. Alleluia. Be known. It's breaking. Alleluia. And finally tonight, a short poem called Night Highway. Along the same lampless road, parabolas of light, each car feeling its way. The sight assures those behind a way is there. Until you turn off, finding your own path home. That's it. Thank you, Dave. Uh, thank you. It's so wonderful. I uh, uh, I love I love listening to all all of you read. I always love hearing you read, Todd. I think I mentioned earlier that Todd's sultry uh, baritone <laughs> rides the rides under the very last lines. Yeah, it's it's what what would you classify your voice as, Todd? It is so low. Um, usually in choirs, I sing bass. It's fantastic. I want you to know, I don't know if I've told you this, Todd, that that your voice is the is the reason that I incorporated that that original recording into the end of the oh. song. <laughs> it had well that's very it. nice of you to say. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks so much, Todd. Love you. We'll uh, we'll see you in a bit. Bye. <clears throat> um Hey again, everybody. So I'm gonna do uh I'm gonna do a few songs now. Uh, this is, uh, since this is a single release party for Von Beeker, crying out loud. Um, no, I'm so glad. I, I didn't want to do this any other way than to have all these wonderful voices uh, gathered together. Um, I'm just going to flip a switch on my camera real quick. Oh, I knew it. I knew it. Nope, I'm going to give up. I was putting it on uh, on manual focus so it didn't didn't keep go in and out, but that was even worse. So I'm gonna keep it like this. Don't if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So I'm gonna play uh, a few songs for you. This is a song that I've heard uh, for the first time really recently, and then and then as soon as I'm done, we're I'm gonna hand it over to my good friend Tim. Pardon me, Tim Bratton, who's gonna do a dramatic reading for us. I got the thumbs up on my side screen here from Tim, so he's all ready to go in the wings. That's excellent. Um, one of the problems with eating or drinking anything right before you perform is you start having the, the disgusting little inside burps, so I apologize. You should never eat or, well, never eat anything right before you perform. Um, oh, this, this, I'm going to fix this real quick. It's getting super annoying. My apologies. That's looking pretty good. It was, there we go, we're good. Sorry about that. I guess I don't have to tune my guitar so you can watch me focus my camera. That's, that's pretty much the equivalent, I guess, for live streaming. So I'm gonna do a song that I heard for the first time. Um, this is a cover and then I'm gonna do two originals um, ending with Trying to Be Free. This is a song I heard for the first time, uh, I think this last week. It's, it's off of a, an album uh, from Nick Cave. 
that just got released um, this year, so it's quite new. And as we were talking about uh, New Mexico and I, I don't know, this song hit me really hard the first time I heard it and I, and I knew I really wanted to play it um, for you tonight in this gathering, so here we go. towards us, darling, with a memory in its paws, and a child swims between two boats, her mother waving from the shore, darling. Africa, darling, and we won't get to anywhere, anytime this year, darling. So that's Albuquerque uh, off the album Carnage by Nick Cave. Great album. Uh, I, can't, I can't do Nick Cave justice, but great album. 
I'm going to grab my acoustic. And Kristen, if you're uh, if you're still here, check your check your Facebook messages. All right, this is uh, this is a song called "Wanna Be Known." Face player with a perfect hand. I used to be a good prayer. I used to know your plan. Maybe I should trust and leave it all alone. But I want to know you and I want to be known. I want to know you and I want to be known. neighbor like I love myself I guess that's the place where I could use a little help cause there's a deep dark grave where I buried my heart yeah. and I'd raise it up but I don't know where to start oh no I can walk away and leave it all alone but I want to know you and I want to be Snakes in the garden, just different names. If there was a garden and somebody to blame, all the lines are blurry to a wash of gray. If everything is true, then I'm afraid. Give in the doubt and leave it all alone. Yeah. Except that I wanna know you and I wanna be known. Yeah, I could walk away, leave it all alone. But I wanna know you and I wanna be known. I wanna know you and I wanna be known. All right, so I'm going to play, uh, thanks for all the kind words about my butt, everybody. Appreciate that. I didn't realize, uh, I guess I put on, it's a good thing I put on good pants. These are good butt pants I think I'm wearing right now, a little bit dressy. So thanks, Edward. Thanks for pointing that out. I appreciate it. He said, nice, nice gratuitous butt shot, Dave. I'll have to go back and watch the replay and see just how much I revealed, but I can't take it back now. And you know what? 
I'm not sorry. Not sorry. <clears throat> this butt's kept me married for 20 years, okay? All right, here we go. for shame honey we've all been there i know nothing i say will make it seem fair that pleasure and pain are so tangled together please know you deserve to be loved and the shelter he's given you it isn't enough when the nights are gone cold and you lie in the silence with passion and pain held so tightly together yeah. we are shaking our shackles just trying to be free without walking away from everything to page knowing nothing you write can never erase how salvation and pain they're so bound up together we are shaking our shackles and just trying to be free without walking away scrolling through the photos on my phone because i love who i am when i am not alone there's an ache that you left me a sliver of home why do friendship and pain always wind up together we are shaking our shackles we're just trying to be free Without walking away from everything There it is. I like these group shows because I only have to practice three, so <laughs> three songs. It's wonderful. I should invite you all to every show. Come and, come and fill my time. Um, all right, I'm gonna pass it over to a great friend of mine, uh, Tim Bratton, who I've known for a very long time. We've been through some fire together. Some We've laughed a lot together. We've been stupid a lot together. Uh, can't wait to be stupid with you again one day, Tim. Um, but uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna bring in my friend Tim here. You ready? Give me a thumbs up if you're good to go. Okay, sweet. 
All right, hey Tim, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna hand hey. it right over to you because I know you got a pretty awesome. I'm I'm excited. Tim Tim is a great writer, great actor, great thinker, um, and he's kind of combined all those things into this this just little sliver. I chal I'm like Tim, can you please share just a little sliver of your? It's like you have this beautiful baby that you've grown and <laughs> you're so proud of. Can you please just show us? Her finger. Can you just bring a finger to you, show us? And you we'll get a finger, you. and I've been very reticent to share this child virtually. In the pandemic, everybody's been like, you should just do it online, but this is, is the most you're getting. All right, excellent. Well, we'll take what we can get, Tim. Uh, with, the, without, good. with that, I'm going to hand it over to you, sir. Very good. Thank you. So, uh, yeah, as Dave said, we've been friends for many years, uh, been through much together, and uh, um, another time we should share some of those stories. But for now, I've been invited to share a little bit from uh, a one-person show that I have written called My Little Plastic Jesus, and it's a bit of a personal memoir. It's a little bit of a history lesson. It's a little bit of an exploration of uh, a kind of a critical look at evangelical pop culture. And I toured it right up to the beginning of the pandemic. And uh, I really want to get back on the road with it and share it with more people. I've mainly been touring it to people's living rooms because I really like doing it as a very small, intimate show with kind of 30 to 50 people. So when this whole thing's over, if you uh, want to see the whole baby, as it were, um, see this whole show, um, I'd love to hear from you. Uh, you can get a hold of me through the theater company I'm a part of called Burnt Thicket Theater. But that's enough of an intro. Um, here's just a little sliver of my show, um, and I hope you enjoy it. <sighs> Most things that contribute to who we are have been set in motion long before we can do anything about it. And that is why I can say Jesus has always been a part of my life. I mean, I cannot remember a time in my mind, in my life, when I did not have images and ideas of Jesus. Jesus has always just been there. In fact, one of my earliest memories is of a picture that hung downstairs in our house. It was a, it was a 3D image of Jesus knocking on a door and as a young child I remember looking up at that picture you know watching Jesus waiting and really just wondering if anyone was going to open the door and I didn't know it at the time but it was actually a knockoff of a famous painting entitled Christ at Heart's Door it's a painting by a man named Warner Salmon and I mean you've probably never heard of Warner Salmon but I can almost guarantee that you have seen one of his paintings most likely, in one form or another, you have seen this one, mm -hmm. called Head of Christ. Or, I mean, maybe you've seen a knockoff of it, or maybe even a knickknack, right, featuring the painting? Now, Warner Salmon, he painted Head of Christ at the beginning of World War II, and since that time, the original publishers of the image claim that it has been printed over 500 million times times. I hope I don't need to tell you that is an insane amount. In fact, Head of Christ may be the most printed painting ever. Ever. Warner Salmon painted Jesus. He painted the image of Jesus that has been seen by more people than probably any other. And I, I, I don't know about you, but if I'm honest, even today, whenever I picture Jesus in my head, this is kind of what he looks like. And I never used to think that was a problem, but over time that's changed. I mean, I mean, for starters, he doesn't even look remotely Middle Eastern, more Scandinavian, right? But for me, it's more than that. See, for me, Head of Christ can invoke a whole universe of evangelical pop culture that has told me things about the world, about God, about power, about when the world was going to come to an end. It is an image of Jesus, of of reality that has been shaping me and my life since before I was even born. The philosopher Soren Kierkegaard said, life can only be understood backward, but it must be lived forward. And that's part of the conundrum I'm, I'm in. I, I'm trying to make sense of my past as I work out where I'm going. I mean, it took me a long time to see the problems with this Jesus, with evangelical pop culture, Jesus. 
longer still to start pulling on that thread to find out what those problems meant for me, for my identity, for the frame through which I see the world. Because when you start pulling on that thread, you can never be sure where it's going to end. The whole image could unravel and leave you with nothing. At least that's what they always warn me. The truth is, I didn't really think about the problems with this Jesus, with evangelical pop culture Jesus, till about 12 years ago. See, I, I had started a, a graduate program. I was taking a theology degree, as one does, and a lot of my friends at school there, they were like me. They had come from a more conservative evangelical background. But some of my new friends, they, they hadn't come from that background. They had made their way to theological study by a different path. And so one night, a bunch of my new friends were all, were all sitting around, having a great time, eating a wonderful dinner together, and it's all going so well. And then, you know, I'm not quite sure what happened. All, all I do know is that those of us who had grown up within evangelical pop culture, we, uh, we started singing this song by DC Talk, who, I mean, if you're not familiar with them, they're kind of like the evangelical pop culture equivalent of the Beatles or maybe the Backstreet Boys. Anyway, we start singing this song by them called I Don't Want It. And it goes like this. It goes, I don't want it. I don't want it, want it. I don't want it, want your sex for now. S-E-X is a test when I'm pressed, so back up off the less of that. Just impress this brother with a life of virtue. The innocence that's spent is gonna hurt you. Safe is the way they say to play it. Then again, safe ain't safe at all today. So just wait for the mate that's straight from God and don't have sex with your tie the knot. Huh. And for a moment, everything's great. I mean, it's just a group of white 20-something graduate students singing a hip-hop song about not having sex. It's totally normal. And then while we were still singing... I looked across the table at my friend Lydia, someone who had never been exposed to evangelical pop culture before, and I watched as this look of fear and horror came over her face as she watched her friends, who seemed so normal just a moment ago, now sing together unprompted the same invocation of evangelical purity culture. And it was in that moment that maybe for the first time I saw how strange the culture I had grown up in, evangelical pop culture, how strange it can be. And that's just a little bit of my little plastic Jesus. I really do hope that I can share it with you all in a living room sometime soon. Until then, hope you enjoyed that. Tim, I am so glad that you included the DC Talk rap in this, the section that you chose. I had forgotten all about that. And <laughs> well, no problem. That, that's a highlight, man. Big highlight. It's locked. <laughs> it's locked deep in the memory. Like I couldn't forget that if I wanted we had to. A, so. We had a DC Talk OMG comment you can see here. So yeah, some, <laughs> wonderful. Some deep cuts. Yeah, and if you do yeah. get a chance to see, uh, you know, when things open up again, if you get a chance to see Tim's. Tim's piece as it travels around anywhere, uh, please do. It's totally worth your time. And um, I had a lot of cringy, relatable cringe happening throughout the show, but also some some good deep uh, insights and, and hits yeah. as well. So thank you, Tim. Thanks for that. You're welcome. Thanks for doing the hard work of squeezing all the vitamin D, the riches out of your long show <laughs> in five minutes. It was, it was worthwhile. Trying. I, and I will just say this, for, yes, for people who grew up in evangelical pop culture, I think it's entertaining. And even if you didn't, I think you will enjoy it. I've had enough <laughs> people who are like, oh, I had no idea, but yeah. loved it. So, yeah. Yeah, it gets a little absurd. <laughs> All right. Good night, Tim. Love, Love you. It's nice to see Take you care. even in Love this you, weird way. Oh, what an evening. Okay, so next up, uh, I don't think Emmett is going to be doing any raps for us, uh, as far as I know. But Emmett, if you feel like you're, uh, you're, you know, probably ready to go, because we haven't. So Emmett was, yeah, he's got, he's got the thumbs up. Excellent. So Emmett was um, having some technical difficulties earlier tonight, and knowing that he went, his Wi-Fi was down. He tried restarting, wouldn't restart. So he actually went to a friend's house just to get working. Pardon me, working Wi-Fi. It looks like your friend has a beautiful, um, beautiful fireplace there, Emmett. So I think it was a good call. What a nice, what a nice little setting. Totally. It ended up working out really well, and I'm glad that I am still able to be here. Excellent. Excellent. Um, 
Awesome. You, we can hear you good, except you're a little quiet. So I'm, I'm going to mute yourself. Oh, if you have any way to turn yourself up, go ahead and do that. I sure do. How is that? Yeah, we didn't have the privilege of doing a sound check because yeah, you can go even louder if you can. Yeah, how's that? Yeah, I'm gonna wail a little perfect. bit, but perfect. okay, perfect. that's great. Perfect. That's awesome. I know you. I know you like to belt it. So. I sure do. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna back <laughs> yeah, out because I'm causing a bit of an echo. You take it away. Take it away. Sure, sounds good. Thanks, Dave. Um, so it is a pleasure to be with you all tonight. Thank you again, Dave, for asking me to be a part of this. Um, if you haven't heard his single yet, it is absolutely amazing. I was listening to it on the way to my friend's house, and uh, it's an excellent song. Um, I really, the content of it really, really resonates with me, and uh, the theme of tonight really resonates with me. Um, yeah, so I'm going to start about, uh, or I'm going to start with my song Under the Weather, and then I'll talk a little bit more about that. to bad blood to try to get the good stuff isn't that what love does keeps it all in spite of us love after midnight january dark side you made me feel like first night of my whole damn life we were under the weather taking our time crawling out of our shelter but we move so much better together like the moon pulling tides your yeah. hand tugging on mine i'd say it's about time that i got this old love thing right i made my mind up can't compromise love, can't conjure up trust, holding back the painful stuff. Just wanna love you the way I'm supposed to, still trying to love me, just wanna be happy. We were under the weather. Taking our time, crawling out of our shelter But we move so much better together Like the moon pulling tides, your hand tugging on mine I'd say it's about time that I got this old love thing right Spent a lifetime, body is a disguise. Wondering what it feel like falling in a twilight. We've had some bad times, we've had some long nights, but every morning feels like first day of my whole damn life. We were under the weather, taking our time. But we move so much better together Like the moon pulling tides Your hand tugging on mine I'd say it's about time That I got this old love thing right Yeah, I'm so glad you guys saw the doggy. So the, the really nice thing, um, yes, dog kisses. He came up, his name is Floyd. He is like the sweetest baby of all time. He came right up and while I was wailing, he kissed my hand. I think he was just trying to make sure that I was okay and, and that I was <laughs> <laughs> screaming um, not from a place of pain. So <laughs> he's a very sweet guy. So I'm very glad that he came to check up on me. And I'm very glad that you got to see uh, his sweet little face because he is a sweetie. Um, I hope that the audio is okay. I have no way of knowing. Um, but here's to hoping. So I'm going to play another song. Um, I can for sure relate to the message of faith intention. And uh, more recently, I've been writing about 
um, my experience um, being in the church and really struggling um, between faith and doubt and kind of what that looks like and, and feeling really connected to God but not necessarily feeling um, very connected to a church. And uh, so that's what this song is about. It is pretty brand spanking new. So um, yeah, this is called Every Simple Nothing. left to say to be honest it's I've never been known for keeping a promise or keeping my hands to myself or keeping my heart in good health I'm not gonna waste more of your precious time I can't commit unless it's to a crime my heart ain't worth much if I'm out of my mind only as good as the shit that I write There's a whole lot of people still trying to save me I'm only as good as the good Lord has made me I'm not gonna run so you don't have to chase me I'll never give back all the things that you gave me I'm so far from feeling like myself Trying to be like everybody else One man's blessing could be someone's curse Don't speak if you So much to say, to be honest. I wanna believe all the things that you promised. Been keeping my heart to myself. Been keeping from asking for help. I think about you like a lot the time. Like how you were there in the lows of my life. I wanna notice when I see a sign. I wanna know love and for that to feel right I'm so far from feeling like myself Trying to be like everybody else You i
I'm just going to switch guitars really quick. Okie dokie. Um, so this is my last song. And I actually just released this song out into the world on all of the platforms and all the things um, just a few weeks ago. And uh, it's called God Shaped Hole, and it fits in with the topic of this evening very, very well. Um, I identify both as um, queer and trans and a Christian. And that in and of itself, um, I could go on and on about that journey. Uh, it was quite a process to be able to get to the point where I am now. Uh, in, in both who I am as a person and in my faith. And uh, I wrote this song sort of at the beginning of when I was really starting to um, explore what that meant to me. Um, and the song is called God Shaped Hole. Uh, it's about coming out as trans in the church and what it was like for me um, coming out and, and being afraid to the possibility of having to face rejection um, and really learning that um, my faith, it mattered more to be connected to God than it did to, to be accepted by human beings. Um, and lucky for me, I did find that acceptance in a lot of human beings. And, and so I've been really, really blessed. Um, but this song is really just an expression of what I believe unconditional love truly means. So here it goes. Yeah. 
Thank you again so much for listening. Thank you, Dave, again for having me. If you want to watch the music video to that song I forgot to mention, um, there was a bunch of LGBTQ people who participated um, in the music video from across North America, and they all shared a little aspect of their story in the video, and um, I think it's definitely worth checking out, and you can find that on my website as, so as all the other so things. Good. Thank you very much. <laughs> and you're so good. You're Thank, so you, good. Emma. Thank you, Emmett. That was fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. You too. Well, some new Emmett Michael fans here I can see in the in the comments and well deserved. So thanks Emmett for being here with us. Thanks for fighting to get your Wi-Fi to work. Um, yeah, Seth says so good Emmett. Kim says thank you Emmett, powerful. I agree. Uh, yeah, it's fantastic. All, all all three songs fantastic. Thanks Emmett. Um, really really a blessing to know you and and watch you go through all you've gone through, continue to go through and, and have the perspective that you have. It's pretty inspiring. Um, <clears throat> Karin is, a, Karin is a, a relatively new friend as far as Glenn friends go. I think we met in the last year uh, in, in the, the peach whiskey times of the Glen, in the peach whiskey period of the Glen. Uh, and then COVID hit and everything and we've, we've all been missing each other quite a bit. And and uh, and I can't wait to wait to get to hang out some more with with Karen. But what I can say already is that she's a she's a really just a gentle, beautiful soul that uh, is wonderful to have around. And I know she's a fantastic writer as well. So I can't wait to hear some of that. Karen, if you give me a little thumbs up, if you're you're good to go, awesome. Okay, welcome, Karen. Thanks for being here. Thank you. I always like, uh, we've done some video chats as well. I always like Karen's like background in the room she's in. It just looks so, perf so studious and like, I don't know. I, I just imagine great things coming out of this room. So. <laughs> oh, I'm trying. <laughs> well, Doing I'm gonna, my best. I'm going to hand over the floor to you, Karen, and you take it away if that's all right. Okay. Okay, is my sound still good? I turned down my computer because great. I'm getting an echo. Yeah, it's great. I still. Sorry, I'm I don't know if you, you can, can hear me, me when you can't see me, but it's great. It's great. Okay. I'm going to okay. turn off my, uh, my mic anyway, so then your echo will be even, there'll be no echo. Okay. Okay. Great. So um, I'm going to read a few poems. I wanted to start with... Um, I've, I've been working on a manuscript over the last two years um, since the Glen in 2019. Um, that is a, uh, it's a, an overarching narrative um, made up of like a groups made up of a number of different short stories all told in poems. So I wanted to read a couple of those. These are pretty new. Um, they are uh, told this is telling the story of a woman who is struggling with her faith um, as, as a mother, and I, I don't want to get into her whole, her whole story, but um, this is her kind of, this is that faith intention. I thought these would fit really nicely. First one is called Vigil. At church, the words blurred, but that was okay. She learned to borrow the sound of the organ let it burrow into her chest, learned to let the voices in the choir sink into her bones, learned to focus on the way the stained glass windows fluttered with the light from outside. Sometimes the pictures looked smudged and sometimes they glowed. She called it good. If she could sit in this place, the words would learn to sit with her. Every week she held herself in the pew, waited, told herself it looked close enough to faith to count. So later in this narrative, she ends up um, leaving the, the church that she's in and um, going out into the, into the woods. And this one is called Ferns. Tell me what you know about ferns. 
how they supple shade, flourish it, catch and ripple light between their fingers. They are forever shy things, yet they arch their backs and open to earth, to sky. They are tongues, they are eyelashes, they are tendernesses gathered together, a cloak. She would lie there among them if she felt she could leave this path, absorb, absorb them into herself, learn to live that shade of green, learn to bring in light without straining so much at the world. My next poem is actually a Santa Fe pro poem. Uh, this was inspired by my, I, I, in 2019, I drove to and from um, Santa Fe on my own. It was a long drive coming from the Midwest. And um, there was a sign in New Mexico up in, in the desert. I don't remember exactly where. And when I first saw it, I thought, is that, does it really say that? It's called, the sign said, gusty winds may exist. So this is my poem kind of jumping off of that sign. Gusty winds may exist. So says the sign, the warning kind, on a lonely road in New Mexico. So much may, may exist, may blow night free of day, may unpeel hidden from seam, may release lost from the corners of its dusty maze. In fact, everything may rise up while you drive this length of road. Hills may roll, the pavement may turn to river, messages may crack and branch across the sky, your chest thudding with the sound. Hurtling across the land like this, you may realize something, may find words for all the nameless wisps flitting fiery from head to heart to belly. You may watch them open like Apache plumes, may see them tremble, lifting pink arms to the sky. And the last poem I want to read, um, this was, I, I've been really interested for a long time uh, in what we do in spite of. And um, this poem actually started, I'm, I'm a violinist and every year the, the community orchestra that I play with does a concerto competition. And um, from my spot in the section, one year especially, I was able, I had a really close view of the high school student who was playing piano with the orchestra. He did an amazing job, he sounded great. Um, he didn't look nervous, he looked totally on top of it but I was close enough that I could see his fingers over the keyboard and I could see them trembling. And um, I, I know that feeling very well. And so this, this, this sort of inspired, this, seeing that was what started this poem. It took me years to get it right, what I was trying to say. It's called, How to Put Up a Fight in the City of Ruin. When they lost the words, they sang. When their voices gave out, they danced. When the trembling would not stop, they found hands to hold. Sometimes they held strangers. They filled ache with books and lonely with flowers, zinnia, stargazers, and snapdragons. They planted hollyhocks to tower around the silent doors to their hearts. They drew circles in the sand instead of lines drew until they dizzied and the circles began to spiral and they climbed the spirals to heaven. The view was heavenly. They learned to stand shattered, learned the stretch and cradle of their skin holding the pieces together, learned that whole is not the same as unbroken. They learned to piece and patch and that their own hair and veins made as strong and fine a thread as any. They hung their tapestries in every bare place. They became sometimes the same wind and light that brushed their work and carried their songs, that moved through their bodies, that brought words to their lips at last. Thank you. Mm, that was so good, Karin. Thank you. <clears throat> Tell me the name of that last poem again. That's called um, How to Put Up a Fight in the City of Ruin. That's a poem in and of itself. I love that title so much. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks so much for being part of this. Thank you. We'll see you again soon. Thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure. Have a good night. Um, wonderful. Yeah, so wonderful. Um, 
so much, so much good stuff. Uh, Kristen is a good friend of mine who, uh, who I met at the Glen as well. And uh, Kristen, I was looking for, I'm going to, are you okay to come on Kristen? Probably we didn't do any sound checks or anything. So we're just assuming, but I think you, you look great. I think it's going to work out just fine. Um, oh, except you don't have headphones, right? You don't have headphones on. That's fine, but I'm not going to bring you on just yet because there'll be an echo. I know. Um, so <coughs> I was I was just frantically looking in the background to try and find this photo of Kristen and I because um, Kristen and I took a took a trip together to the folk museum one year in uh, in Santa Fe and they had this like weird tango exhibit and there's like these strange photos of us in tango uh, no flamenco sorry flamenco costumes um, I was trying to pull one up but I couldn't find it um, so we'll just have to keep that in our in our own minds or if you can if you can imagine uh, my Myself and Kristen in ridiculous uh, tango, uh, flamenco costumes. I think maybe you can approximate it. Uh, I hope that doesn't take away from the beauty of what Kristen's about to read for us, but I'm sure it won't. <laughs> uh, that's uh, That to me epitomizes Kristen. She's so fun to be around. And uh, yeah, I'm just really lucky to know her. So I'm going to bring you on, Kristen, and then I'm going to leave pretty quick so we don't get an echo, okay? All right, I'm out of right, here. I'm out of here. Thanks, Dave. Hi everyone. Can you hear me? Can you guys hear me? Yeah, that was. Yeah, I that was. That I up. screwed that I up. Apologize. I apologize. I'm out of here I'm now. Out of here now. <laughs> Hi everyone. Um, it's so good to be here. And as I was thinking about what to read, uh, I write nonfiction essays and memoir so a little different from the poetry but as I was thinking about what to read I decided to look back and see what I was working on that, that summer at the Glen. Um, I was working with Tanya so I was kind of doing a um, independent study and she was guiding me um, and it's just really interesting to me how all of these different pieces of our lives you know, these were things we started we even arrived in Santa Fe and um, and they just sort of became woven together in that place, um, along with all of our own just longings and um, needs as artists and as people of faith. And um, so it was kind of fun to find this piece that I was working on then. It's part of a longer piece um, and it starts with... Um, me talking about how as a child, my entire like understanding of the world was, or of my life was split into two categories. Like I was either alone or I was not alone. And when I was practicing the piano, I was alone. And when we were around the dinner table as a family, I was not alone. So this picks up a little bit after that. Um, so I'll start here. Alone and not alone. Even my childhood understanding of God was sorted out within this framework. Was God lonely in the garden so he had to create Adam to talk to because the animals couldn't talk? According to my mom, the questions I asked seemed to be drawn from a vast well. And then Adam was lonely because God was always so busy, so he had God create Eve, right? I wanted desperately to understand God, but all mystical explanations struck my orderly mind as suspect. I preferred more practical concerns I could relate to, like where God stood when he created the world, what he had for dinner, and how he felt about being alone so much. Did God eat the fruit from the garden with Adam and Eve, or did he have his own special food in a different place? Loneliness and hunger, hunger and loneliness. They were too ubiquitous in my life to imagine a God who didn't also contend with them. After all, I was created in God's image, right? And church seemed to be as much about food as it was about prayers and hymns. While the soaring sanctuary of my childhood church inspired somber awe, the basement fellowship hall, the setting for pre-church donuts and after-church potlucks, was filled with delicious smells and happy chatter. I was too young to know the definition of fellowship, but I knew the hall named after it was where stomachs were filled 
and no one was shushed. In theory, God seemed like a promising antidote to loneliness. Sunday school teachers drove home the message that God is always with us. And when I was sad or frustrated about something, my mom often reminded me that I could talk to God, who was always ready to listen and help. But I wasn't my mom. She enjoyed getting up at the crack of dawn each day for her quiet time with God. I couldn't even pray silently for more than 30 seconds before my mind wandered off down some more enticing path. Each Saturday, when tasked with the cleaning of my room, I felt a stab of guilt as I wiped a dusting cloth over the white leather gilded page Bible that sat on my dresser, as if for show. The reality of my relationship with God was much less satisfying than the what, what a friend we have in Jesus concept I had inherited. In fact, the more I tried to befriend God, it seemed the more vague and distant he felt. And subsequently, the more lonely and ashamed I felt. The obvious conclusion was there must be something wrong with me, some flaw. Um, I wasn't smart enough or Christian enough to understand. On Sunday mornings in our vaulted carved oak and stained glass sanctuary, the communion bread and juice were tactile in a promising way. I was too young to take communion, but I studied the elements intently each time they were passed along the pew, right at my eye level. I loved the way the doll-sized glass cups clinked in the tailored-to-fit holes of the pewter tray, and those perfectly squares of strikingly white bread. Could it truly be Wonder Bread, the highly coveted loaves my brother and I never saw in our whole wheat hippie school lunches? The sight of that magical bread alone gave me hope. Ingesting God just might satisfy my lonely hunger. But when the time came for my confirmation class to stand in front of church, dutifully reciting the Apostles' Creed before being offered for the first time, one of those perfect squares of fluffy whiteness, it became strangely gummy in my mouth. With the entire congregation watching and smiling, I willed myself to produce the saliva necessary to chew and swallow the foreign, glutinous wad without gagging. As we filed back to our parents' pews, I felt many things, ashamed, exposed, a fraud, but I didn't feel closer to God. I'm realizing that's kind of a downer, but um, <laughs> there are a lot of funny parts in the piece, and so I hope I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks. Oh my goodness! Oh my that goodness! Was so that was good. so good. Thank you, Kristen. Thank you, Kristen. The glutinous gummy wad. I haven't thought about communion in uh, in that way in words, although. Now that I'm in a wafers church, I have to say, uh, well, we don't do wafers, but I've done I've done wafers, and I have to say that's uh, that's not better. <laughs> wow, so good, so good. Um, I also realized I think when Kristen and I met, we didn't know. I didn't know until I started to see photos because of the pandemic of Kristen doing things from within her home that we both are mid-century modern uh, lovers as well. So. There must have been some psychic connection there. So thanks, Kristen. It's great to have you. Um, yeah, fantastic. I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna go back and listen to probably all this again at some point. Um, Josh is waiting in the wings now. Josh is, uh, uh, you know, I can't describe Josh in a single word. Probably not in three. Probably not in five. Maybe not in ten. Josh and I met. I think the very first day, first year I was ever at the Glen Workshop, we wandered. Uh, we wandered the streets of Santa Fe, got exhausted on Canyon Road, just rode with like 100 art galleries in a mile. Literally, that's not an exaggeration. And, uh, and we survived because I think I brought us granola bars. And that's how Josh and I bonded over backpack granola bars. So Josh, I'm going to bring you into the stream here. I see you got headphones on, so we should be all good for sound. Hey, buddy. Sweet. Hey. <laughs> I always love seeing Josh and he's, he's got this little shed like studio shed with this beautiful it, it was it used to be or it almost was a sauna is that am i getting this right yeah it almost was a sauna um my dad was gonna make it into a sauna and then my brother slept in here for a while and finally i commandeered it and added some windows and 
It Still is hot either office. way, am I right, Josh? Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks, Dave. <laughs> so, you, so you're gonna hear Josh. This is weird because you're gonna hear Josh as a singer-songwriter. I didn't know Josh played an instrument or wrote songs until uh, this same year at the Glen Workshop, I believe, um, with the uh, infamous Peach Whiskey incident, um, which should maybe be another Guns N' Roses album, the Peach Whiskey incident, to follow up the Great Spaghetti incident. But anyway, I didn't know that about Josh. I knew he was, uh, I knew he was a screenwriter. I knew he was hilarious. Uh, and, and this year I found out he's also like an incredible painter and, uh, and a very good singer songwriter. He's been putting out songs every week, uh, and they're f fantastic. So I'm going to, I'm going to put the link to Josh's website in the comments here. Uh, so be sure to hit that up and you'll just like be blown away by the breadth of creativity that comes out of this man. But enough about that. I'm going to get out of the way and let him, uh, let his work speak for itself, not to build you up too much. <laughs> Thanks, Dave. Um, yeah, I'm going to do what China did and take this off because it's not serving me. Um, I will say, yeah, I'm more like a jack-of-all-trades, master-of-none type deal, and that's why Dave didn't know because I'm not actually much of a musician, but I do like making things. I think of myself more as a writer. I write novels and screenplays and short stories and that sort of thing. Um, the, the peach, no, the, in, let's see, peach whiskey. Yeah. That was the first time that I ever played anything for anyone was at the Glen for the open mic. Um, and I hadn't been writing songs for very long and Dave was kind enough to listen to three of them ahead of time and help me pick one, um, because I was pretty nervous. And I'm still normally kind of nervous because I haven't had that many opportunities to play for other people. Uh, is it is it good? Is it? I I can't see whether my sounds. I uh, hopefully I'm all right. You know, I um, was just thinking. I was honestly just oh, thinking. Oh, Dave's talking to me again. Oh yeah, I was just. What did thinking I do? In, I was just thinking in my head how excellent your picture and sound are. Oh, <laughs> perfect. Spot on. Great. All right. <laughs> I'm going to, here, I'll keep this here. No, that's going to choke me. All right. So, yeah. So, um, so the song that Dave helped me pick out is the, the first one that I'll play here. And it's the first song that I ever performed for anyone. And it's one of the first songs that I ever wrote. Um, I don't really know what I'm doing with music technically in any way, but I just sort of follow the spirit, I guess. Um, and Dave helped me pick this one because he's like, you got to know your audience. And this is the audience here at the Glen. Um, <laughs> Tanya says, no, China says I need more peach whiskey to chill out, probably. Um, so I, I went back to this this morning because I'm like, this one's on theme. And I realized you can't not play a song for a year and a half and then immediately jump back in and know it perfectly. So I'm going to do my best here. Um, but this song's called Evangelical. And it's about my upbringing in the beating heart of evangelical Christianity and where I'm at now. And it's very on theme, yes. All right. When God is... I'm going to start over because of the nerves. All right. When God is a hammer, the whole up just to suffer and fail made this all just to burn it in hell so I walked away from you one step at a time I'm not even sure I knew that I Wanna belong 
So we'll go with that. All right, evangelical. So I'm going to jump forward in time to um, <clears throat> my one of my more recent songs. The actually the first song that I wrote in my song a week for a year project, which I'm posting to YouTube. Um, writing a song every week, recording myself doing it, and then posting it, um, which is a little terrifying. But it gives me uh, some freedom to um, explore and try different things. Anyway, this song is called Pocket Jesus. It's a little less overt. Hopefully I've gotten a little more poetic in my songwriting as time's gone by. Um, and it came out of this past few years of politics and seeing evangelical Christians in particular become very wedded to a certain orange man um and i did i didn't enjoy that um so mm, i also don't have it up here okay um so yeah so i wrote a song about it as one does pocket jesus and it's about people using jesus as like a their own personal vending machine, I guess. I put Jesus in my pocket Took him to the store Jesus bought me what I wanted But I just kept wanting more Pocket Before your punches pile in 
pocket Jesus if you're at my beck and call don't let me fall don't let me fall Jesus. <clears throat> I don't really know where I am right now, what I think about most things. I'm a big fan of ignorance. I just put out one of my songs. My songs on the YouTube is called What Would Jesus Do? Which is a slogan many of you may remember. Um, but, um, uh, and that, the kind of the recurring theme in that song was, it, uh, I think, I have no idea what Jesus would do. I think ignorance is a good place to land, so that's where I am right now. Um, all right. And I've gone and somehow closed down the song I needed. Oh, but I've got it here. So if you'll bear with me for two seconds. Um, Sorry, I know I should be professional and have all this memorized, all my lyrics, everything, but I, I'm writing one a week, so I write them and forget them. And also, I... Josh, if you want a professional... Oh, Dave's talking to me again. If you want a professional... What did I do? If you want a professional, what? ask Tanya. She's the professional, okay? Tanya, that's true. Beginning. Call that's her in. That's true. Very leave much. that to her. Yes. We're amateurs. Absolutely. All right. Okay, uh, so I'll just make this my last one. Um, this song is called Your Love Knows My Name, and it is... The others are kind of downers, so I decided to do one that starts as a downer and then ends positive a little more. And it's kind of a COVID song. Freedom lives inside of me and I 
that just means that what we have always will remain your love knows my name our love will remain your love knows my name Thank you, Emmett. That, that's very cool of you to say, because you sound way better to me. <laughs> and yeah. Josh, so good. So good. <clears throat> so so everybody, this is Josh, my friend who uh, is, it's very typical that he would say he's not a musician after what you just <laughs> heard. <laughs> so good, Josh. You're getting better every time I hear you. You're, you, have, you have an incredible voice. I hope you know that. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Oh, I wanted to add too. I know we're pressed for time, add, but add. Um, I don't know why I. I wasn't sure why to, I picked that song to f finish with because it's not really on the theme as much, but it kind of is because um, I felt a little lost over this whole pandemic experience, and I felt found and loved a little bit um, in the love of the people who care for me, even though. Um, I don't really know where I am with regard to cosmology and epistemology and all those <laughs> other ologies that um, that I've found myself a little centered in love with people like Dave and specifically in that song, My Wife. But yeah, thanks for the opportunity, Dave, and thanks, thanks for, for being here, putting me in this cool lineup. Yeah, what a lineup, hey? Man, are we yeah. lucky to know the people yeah. we know. It's amazing. For sure. Thanks, Josh. Love you. We'll talk to you soon. Sounds good. Yeah. Um, okay, we're almost at the end of the night, everybody. This has been uh, wonderful. I'm sure you'd agree with me. Um, and I know it's very late for some people, especially on the East Coast, so uh, no hard feelings if you need to go to bed or put kids to bed or whatever. But we're, we're landing the plane soon, I promise. We're running a little later than I planned, but it's just uh, it's just been a wealth of amazing good stuff i hope you're enjoying it like i am and uh and and it will be online uh this will be on facebook for posterity as soon as it's done so uh please feel free to watch again or share with someone that you wish had been here and and would have enjoyed this um that would be wonderful um so i met jen stewart fuston i th maybe my first year uh, in santa fe and uh and the last year i went uh, she helped me save some money by letting me fly to denver and then driving uh with her and uh, and i could tell you a whole bunch of stories about that drive um about alien um, near alien sightings of the ufos and uh tanya runyon runyon um, almost sitting on all of the animal statues we saw along the road uh, about taking me to an amazing natural hot spring for the first time and uh the first time i've ever covered myself in mud uh, there's so many great, <laughs> great stories I could link back to, uh, getting to know, uh, Jen Stewart Fuston. But one of the things, uh, I love about her the most is her poetry. Her poetry is, uh, I think everything I've ever read by her just really gets me in a deep way. Um, there are things that I read that I, uh, it, it works in my head. There are other things that I read that work directly on my heart, and I think of it as inhaling or eating words rather than reading them through my eyes and my brain. I know that sounds funny, but that's how I think of it as I read. Uh, and Jen's words are, are some of those words. And she was kind enough, though she couldn't be here live with us tonight, she was kind enough to send this. So I'm going to play this for you now. This is uh, a couple of poems from my friend Jen Stewart Houston. Hey, Dave and everybody, uh, congrats on the song um, and the uh, single release party. I'm sorry that I can't um, be with you guys 
but um, I did want to uh, contribute a little something to the to the event. Um, Dave uh, worked on this song a couple summers ago when we were all at the Glen. I'm sure the story's probably been told now. And uh, I had the fortune of getting to drive him back to the airport um, in Denver. And so we kind of, uh, he kind of played it for me and went over the lyrics. And it was just a really fun uh, conversation about, um, uh, you know, putting this song together. So it's, it's wonderful to see it now a couple years down the road um, and, and out as a full single. So Dave asked me to read a couple of poems um, kind of along the lines of the themes of the song, um, which is sort of faith uh that's in transition um beliefs that we are walking away from things that we're trying to hold on to so um i had a book of poetry come out um this last year uh right after pandemic began um it's called madonna complex and um there's a number of poems probably a whole section of the book that really um is about exactly what what the song is about. So I'm just going to read a couple of them that represent moments in my work when um, I was kind of confronted with new ways of understanding um, the language that I that I grew up with, um, beliefs that were uh, starting to shift. So uh, I'm just going to read two of them. Um, one is the first one here is called "On Being Asked If I Share the Gospel with My Students." On being asked if I share the gospel with my students, I know I'm not getting any of this guy's money because this is the missionary equation. I, with my presentation and my worn out shoes, a life honed to a single point. He, with the presumption that he's sending me like a spy or a time bomb into the forsaken darkness, like a single ember bright lit in a censer swung across the map. His is a gospel of nets, of capture. His is the gospel that asks, if you died tonight, do you know for sure you'd go to heaven? A gospel of the escape route, the secret doorway, the cheat. I can speak his language like a native, but can't quite find a way to tell him I am no ember. That mine is a gospel of tanks rusting in the snow, a gospel of grass growing over the place they massacred their neighbors, a gospel of guard shacks peeling off their paint, gospel of old songs being sung in the tavern, of year by year clear water filling up the empty missile silo, of new bricks making straight the rough streets. And then another one. Um, called On the Ferry, which I have to find here. All right. And this is a very particular memory of mine um, from, from time abroad and, and, uh, and just a particular moment where I felt something sort of shift in my belief system. So it's called On the Ferry. What I remember is we were on water, suspended in afternoon air on our way elsewhere, but not having arrived. What I remember is sun scorching the surface till the strait was a brilliant blue fire and the soft canter of the boat beneath the gull's white laughter. We watched them gathering fish in the sparkling churn. I watched her, another passenger, her ankles crossed with her sisters, her veil smooth over dark brown hair, her eyes deeply awake, awake, awake. The boat moved over water and slowly the shorelines dissolved between wherever it was we had come from, wherever it was we went. Belief spilled off me like water, the way a strand of hair strays from a forehead, tender, thin, gone. There was no more lake of fire. I could no longer make my heart fear in the way I'd been taught to fear. The boat rowed us over the water, sun sparking in lengthening rays, till the long wooden planks were extended. I gathered my things for departure, pulled everything close as I crossed to the solid bank. Sometimes now the sensation will flutter and I'll reach for my bags, an impulse of travelers, always reaching 
for what's been left behind. So thanks so much, Dave and everybody, for letting me uh, share from a distance um, a couple of poems from my book. And I, I hope that everything uh, goes wonderfully and you guys all enjoy uh, the new single. Yay. Thanks. Bye. Make it seem fair that pleasure and pain are so tangled together Please know you deserve to be loved And the shelter is giving you It isn't enough when the nights have gone cold and you lie in the silence with passion and pain held so tightly together We are shaking our shackles, we're trying to be free Without walking away from everything Cause I love who I am when I am not alone There's an ache that you left me, a sliver of home Why do friendship and pain always wind up together? We are shaking our shackles, we're trying to be free Without walking away from everything Well, everybody, um, what a magical, wonderful evening. I am so blessed to know 
so many of you. Um, <clears throat> wow. So, okay. Uh, you can get the single here at vonbeaker.com. Uh, so many of you have listened and shared your thoughts already uh, and your kind words, which has been fantastic. So thank you for that. Um, this has been, uh, yeah, such a, such a success for me already as a as a, a single and just as a meaningful kind of piece of art to ingest and put back out into the world. So thank you for being a part of that. Um, <clears throat> one of the feed one of the pieces of feedback that came to me. Um, was I shouldn't drink bourbon while I do these nights. <laughs> I'm gonna get teary. One of the pieces of feedback that came to me was a, a good friend from <clears throat> from long ago, from my Bible college days, uh, heard the song, and uh, their response. So the the chorus is: "We are shaking off shackles, trying to be free, without walking f away from everything." And their question to me was. Why not just walk away? Wouldn't it be easier? That and that's what they had done, and they were basically telling me that that they had done that, and it was the right choice for them, and they had no regrets, and they had been quite happy since, and um, all of this kind of anguish and laboring over trying to keep some sort of a spiritual life alive had been hurting them, and they felt free and and happy now. Uh, I'm still thinking about that question, but. I think the answer, my answer, is tonight. Um, all of you, all the people that I get to know uh, who are the incredible courage and strength of people that stay in the struggle and know that there's something beneath all of the shit and garbage um, that's worth, that's redeemable and that, that we are worth being redeemed. So... Uh, so for now, here I am, and uh, and I'm glad that I'm not alone. So thank you all. Um, thanks for staying a little longer than you planned. Thanks for uh, witnessing that, that video with me for the first time. Uh, well, I've seen it before. Trust me, I've seen it a hundred times this week, but um, first time anywhere else. And uh, we'll see you, all, see you all in the deep end real soon. Have a good night.